Hello, welcome back and if you're new here my name is Becca and today I have a non-spoiler review of My Second Life by Faye Bird. This book was sent to me by Sarah from the Book Bug Company in exchange for an honest review and that's what I'm going to give you. I will leave a link to her website down below if you'd like to check it out. First up, the plot of this book is about a 15 year old girl who knows that she's lived before, this is her second life, and she remembers that she had a first life, she remembers her family and her mother and her father and things like that, but she doesn't remember the final points, like where she lived, she doesn't remember much from her later life I don't think, but it's sort of an interesting twist on reincarnation where the person actually remembers that they've lived before. She's really confused about this as well, like when she's growing up and her mum from her second life calls her Anna. She keeps saying, I'm not Anna, I'm Emma. She doesn't call her mum mum because to her, her mother is the one from her first life and it would feel like a betrayal to call the mother from her second life mum. Very early on into the book, she goes to hospital to visit her grandma who's just had a routine operation and she sees somebody called Frances Wells that she remembers from her first life. This sort of opens a floodgate of memories and she remembers a little girl called Catherine and she remembers the girl died and she thinks that she was responsible. So essentially the book follows her trying to figure out what happened, what she did, did she kill the little girl, why did the little girl die and it soon becomes clear that her family and the family of Frances Wells who was Catherine's mother were much more intertwined than she thought that they were. So this is a young adult mystery thriller. I would say that it's aimed at the younger end of young adult. It was published in 2014. It's quite a short book with 280-ish pages and I gave it three stars. I would also classify this book as magical realism because one of the biggest things that I had a problem with in this is that there was no explanation for why she was reincarnated. Was it so that she could face up to what she'd done? was it so that she had a second chance at life? There was no sort of explanation for why that happened and in some places I thought that could, there could be a lot of depth. I did find it a little bit predictable and I predicted some of the big reveals quite early on in the book. Throughout the book she does struggle with sort of how can she go on feeling responsible for this little girl's death, like would it be easier for her to just move on? can she move on knowing what she's done and there's a lot of talk about death and is death being freedom in this. I think that that was well resolved at the end. Aside from the few problems that I had I did really enjoy this. It was a very quick read. I started it after work one day and I finished it the evening after so I read it pretty much just in two sittings. I thought that it was very compelling. There was enough sort of clues revealed to keep you reading. It was a little bit repetitive in parts like she kept reminiscing on a specific moment over and over and over again. I would recommend that you read this if you're new to the thriller genre and if you want something that's very fast paced, intriguing and sort of a good introduction to the point where you are probably not going to predict what's going to happen. I thought that the character development in this was very good. The struggles that Anna was going through as she tries to unravel the mysteries of the past felt very real. I liked the character of her mother in her second life, Rachel, who was very much a good mother despite the fact that her daughter refused to call her mum or anything like that. She was constantly there. All of Anna's family were very supportive and I thought that it was very real the way that Anna struggled to deal with the fact that these people from her past life, like her original parents and Frances Wells, had all sort of moved on. Anna didn't actually know what she'd done. She didn't know how Catherine died. She didn't know if she was responsible or what had happened. The struggle to open the floodgates in these people from her past life felt very, very real. It was very touching in moments when she came into contact with her original family. It sort of got me in the feels just a little bit. In the end, I rated this as a solid three stars. It was good. I enjoyed it. It could have been better in parts, but like I said, if you are very new to the thriller genre, 
I would recommend giving it a go. It is set in the UK, it's set in London, there is a lot of sort of British language in there, like things like saying mate instead of friend. You can tell that it's written by somebody from the UK and it feels very realistic in that setting. I know things like the infernal devices and other things written by American authors set in the UK don't feel quite as real, but this was very much written by a UK author set in the UK and being from the UK myself I did appreciate that. Overall I would say it is a solid mystery thriller and definitely worth the read. It's fast paced and it's intriguing. It's light and not all deep and dark and gritty so if you're looking for a thriller that isn't sort of gonna bring you right down and deals with extremely difficult topics then I would definitely go for this one. That's all from me today. Please subscribe if you would like to and also like this video if you liked it. If you head into the down bar, you can find my links to Twitter, Goodreads and Instagram and also to the Bug Book Company so you can check out Sarah's page. But that's everything from me today. Bye. Bye.